So I came across an interesting problem this week that I wanted to share with you on a project that I've been working on that requests data from two separate locations, in this case, two different APIs. These APIs both had different rate limits. So I found that when I was trying to maximize my throughput and get as much information from it from the rate limit as possible, I was either way under one or way over the other. So I rewrote my code a little bit and I thought I can put async in here. I have enough requests available, but then I found that it was too much. So we needed a solution to say that was quicker than synchronous one by one requests, but not as much as a full uncontrolled async request that was making too many requests and causing me to get blocked and then have to remake or redo those requests. So interestingly enough for this project, I actually used Flask, which I think you might find a little bit unusual given the fact that they've got fast API and everything these days. So if you're interested in to know why I use Flask, let me leave me a comment and I'll do a video on that. So I found AIO Limiter, which actually lets you control that. It, you can give in certain rates. It works on a leaky bucket algorithm that will then allow those rates through to the server as you go and it was super easy to put in so I wanted to show you in this video how I went about that and how you can use it in your code and projects as well so you can really control async requests and you can actually get as many requests done as you are allowed to do so what I did is I created a demo server. This is written in Go and I followed along with these two links here to show me how to implement the rate limit here. So what I did is I put a rate limit on this endpoint and I created a couple of scripts to request data from it. So I did put a sleep time in the endpoint there on the Go server just so I could mimic a little bit of network lag obviously because this is running on my local host. We can see that the synchronous version where the requests happen one after the other never gets near the limit and it actually then ne never sees any errors but it takes quite a while to run. Then we'll find that the async version which is obviously much faster because we can make requests without having to wait for the response each time. So you'll see here just how much of a difference async makes when we don't have to actually wait and we can actually make requests instead of waiting that whole second to get the data back. Synchronous took like 17 minutes, which was really boring. This one took just 10 and a half seconds, but we did get 106 errors, which means we went over our rate limit 106 times and we would need to do something with that. This code can execute thousands of requests per second and is easy to write, and that will smash through any API rate limit that you might have and will easily get you blocked from any website. Now I wrote the code in Go on the server to actually send this error back when we are over the limit. And this is just to sim symbolize like whatever you might find a 429 too many requests or something along those lines, depending on what data you're requesting from where. So you can see we've got errors with this one here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add in the limiter into this code here. And we can see how we can tailor it to make sure that we get as many requests done as possible without getting over that limit. So here you can see the async code that we just ran took 10 and a half seconds 100 100 plus errors uh, it's pretty straightforward we have our main function that makes the uh, collects all the tasks together and we can see here we're requesting and using our async and await so to actually control this a bit better we can use our AIO limiter that's pretty easy to put in so I'm just going to do from AIO limiter we're going to import in our async limiter class here now from what we can do from here is we need to actually change our function a little bit so this one is now going to become async with limiter because we need to pass in our limiter uh, class here so I'm going to call this limiter we'll put that here and then we'll get rid of this and we'll make a new async def function uh, async with limiter here so we can actually tell our code what to do and we need to then Im, uh, indent these ones here so let's indent this and indent this one as well and that was terrible vim skills so that's it for that case uh, we need to actually construct our limiter here so i'm going to come to our main function and above this i'm going to create our rate limit and this is where we can configure what we actually want to do so i'm going to start with 100 this is going to be our burst amount of requests so this can be really useful if you know that you have say two or three hundred requests per minute you can make and you only need to make a couple of hundred you can burst them all in one go and have to, and then wait literally one second or even that to get all the data back from the api that you want and then going to put 0.1 and this means we're going to do 100 in bursts and then we're going to control it at 0.1 seconds i think this is going to work for the rate limit i set up on the server which i think was like 200 or something like that so now we've done that, we can then go ahead and put our rate limit in here because we need to add that in to tell this 
that we want to use the rate limit that we have just created rate limit there we go so let's save this open up my terminal I need to activate my virtual environment go back into this async uh, limit folder and now let's run our time on pi on our example async again with our limiter it's going to take a bit longer because obviously we are now waiting and not sending as many requests but it's going to be much quicker than our 17 minutes that's for sure and we can tweak this depending on what we're doing so there we go it took 12 seconds and we got 999 successes which was all of the requests we made and so we're only two seconds slower than the full async but we get none of the errors back there so as you can see it's pretty simple to implement and i thought it worked really well we were able to actually really easily tailor how many requests we want and with that leaky bucket algorithm we can actually burst a load of requests in and make use of that first limit on the api i take that data and then make use of the limit on the second API to pull the rest of the information that I needed for this project. I found that this was a really good way of doing it and it worked really well in this instance. So if you've enjoyed this video it'd be great if you could like and comment, maybe subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this, more web scraping content and if you found this interesting about async here but you want to learn how to actually create async code from your own synchronous code using something like HTTPX then you're going to want to watch this video right here where I do exactly that.